This will be the first video in a string of videos going over War Thunder simulator controls and how to use them with a HOTAS and if you have them, pedals. I highly recommend pedals if you can afford them, but you should still be able to fly without them. This video will be a brief overview of sim controls and strategy I use when making a control scheme. I will go into more detail in the other videos over specifics like radar, weaponry, flight controls, but I highly recommend watching this video as it will include some important things. The first thing you're going to want to do is go into controls, then click control setup wizard and select your HOTAS. If you're using the same HOTAS as me, you're going to want to select this and then click select layout. If you're wanting to use the same control scheme as me, I linked the .blk file in the video description. What you're going to do is take that file, find where it's, uh, find where your War Thunder control settings are saved, put it there, and then click on this folder icon that says import from file, and select which one it is. The one I'm going to have linked is named this one, so you're going to want to select this one, click open, and then it'll give you the exact same control scheme I do. But if you don't have the same controls plugged in, things will look different. For example, you can see here, my Xbox controller is plugged in, and it says machine guns is RB and uh, RB and main caliber is RT. But if I unplug it, it changes to something like that. So keep in mind, it'll look like that, but as soon as you plug it back in, uh, it should change. If you are using my control scheme, I made several diagrams to help with learning my control scheme. Because I use four modifier buttons, two of which I use at the same time, I have five different combinations for almost every single button. And to learn those, these charts will help out a lot. However, if you are not using the same HOTAS as me, you may need to bind everything manually, which this video will help with that. This next part is for those who are manually binding their controls. Skip to the next section if you are not doing this. The next thing you will need to do is count how many key bindings you will need across the common and the helicopter or aircraft controls. For me, there's seven key bindings in the common section that I'm using, and for the helicopters, there's at least 50. So it's safe for me to round it up to 60 key bindings and find out how I'm going to get all of those key bindings onto a HOTAS with a limited amount of buttons. Now, you're going to want to count how many buttons that you can use. So for, on our flight stick, we have button 1, which is the trigger, button 2, which is the big red button, button 4, which is the big black button next to it, button 3, which is on the side, and a four-directional hat switch. And act as four buttons or two axes. For our throttle, we have buttons 5, 6, 7, and 8, and buttons 9 and 10 on the back, with a select and start that can act like button 11 and 12. So we have 12 or 16 buttons if you include the hat switch. We need to find out how we're going to get 60 key bindings. So every modifier we use is one button less that we can use since the modifier button cannot have anything bound to it or else it's going to constantly be activating something. There can't be anything bound to the modifier button or else it will not work or at least it won't work well. It, it'll be funky. You can try it, but I wouldn't recommend it. So let's see. We have, tw uh, we'll say 16 buttons. So 16, obviously that's not 60. If we minus one and then double it, we have 30. So if we have one modifier button, we have 15 different other buttons. And in combination with that modifier button, that doubles our combination to 30, but that's still not enough. So if we have two modifier buttons, that reduces our key bindings down to 14. So, but we can triple our key bindings. So 14 times three is 42, still not enough. With three modifier buttons, that's gonna leave us with 13 buttons left, but we can quadruple that. So 13 times four is 52. We're getting close, but we're still not there. With four modifier buttons, we have 12 buttons that we can use that are not modifiers. 
but we have uh, we can multiply our button combinations by five. So 12 times five is 60. That's exactly the number of key bindings that we set out. But I'm gonna take it one little step further. You can use buttons, you can use modifier buttons in combination with each other to add a new combination of uh, controls. For example, if I had button nine and 10 on the back here as my modifier buttons, button nine has its own combinations and button 10 has its own. But if I held them down, that would introduce a completely new combination of uh, key bindings that I could press with different buttons. So we can go ahead and multiply or add another 12 to that. And now we have 72 key bindings. Now I know this might seem a little excessive, but you may not want to just be scraping by bare minimum because you'll being able to access certain things easier will be helpful. So being able to store the not as important things on the less important and harder to reach buttons will be very helpful. Not to mention, some buttons cannot be pressed in combination with each other. For example, start and select are down here, but it would be very hard for me to press a button up here and down here at the same time unless I took my other arm over here to press it. So that's an example of a button combination that's really hard to press at the same time. So you gotta keep that in mind. Now that we know we need four modifier buttons, we need to find out which buttons we want on this HOTAS to be our modifier buttons. I prefer to have all the buttons on the flight stick and not be modifier buttons. I like them to have to actually do something. So I'm gonna have my modifier buttons on the throttle. Now, which would be the best choice for buttons being modifiers? I'm not sure. That's up to you to decide. You could very easily have all of these be your four modifier buttons, but it would be a little difficult to press certain ones in combination with each other, but it's not impossible. My thumb's fat enough that it can press the five, six, and the six and seven at the same time. I prefer to have buttons nine and 10 on the back be my modifier buttons because my in, uh, index finger is always there. They're easy to press at the same time. And it's also easy to press them individually. Not to mention, I, I, never, I don't use this paddle on the back, so my fingers are pretty much available for whatever. But you could have these as your modifier buttons if you want. So I have these two as my modifier buttons one and two, and I use them in combination with each other to introduce a third combination. And for the less important things, such as trimming and radar, I use select and start. There are many caveats to this method of key binding, such as if I wanted to have uh, this fire rockets and holding down nine and pressing this fire rockets in a series, but I have pressing the trigger shooting a gun, but if I press nine and press the trigger, it activates the stabilizer. Well, it'd be very difficult to fire rockets in series and shoot the gun because I'm also uh, activating the stabilizer. So you're gonna wanna be careful how you have your key bindings uh, mapped. That's why I introduced um, as, you know, as many modifier buttons as I can so that I can reduce the overlapping of certain things. I, I can leave some things, uh, some button combinations empty so that it doesn't override thing, you know, very common things that I'm going to be doing, such as shooting my cannon or firing rockets and whatnot. The second thing you want to do is check your axes. Find out how many you will need and how many you have on your HOTAS. So for helicopters, we have collective pitch, roll, pitch, and yaw axis. We're going to need at least three axes for these because you could get away with setting collective pitch to a relative control, but I highly recommend not doing that, especially for helicopters. You could get away with it for planes, but helicopters, it's it is a lot more beneficial to not set it to relative control. Now you also have missile control X and Y axis, but I don't know of a single missile that uses this key, bind, uh, this key binding. And then lastly, we have view in battle. This is also very important to have if you do not have head tracking or VR. So you will need at least four axes just to control the helicopter, but I highly recommend having six so that you can use the view in battle Aircraft, you may have a little bit more. For example, there's hover height, thrust vectoring, wing sweep. 
you actually will need to use yawn pitch axes for aimed weapons if you're using things like um, uh, bullpups or nords. There's also view in battle. There's head movement here. I'll go into all detail about all, how all these work, but those are the only key bindings you need. So you need at least four axes just to control your aircraft and your helicopter. And I highly recommend having a, a fifth and sixth axis so you can look around um, and not have to use head tracking if you don't have it. I highly recommend head tracking, but if you don't have head tracking, you need to have a fifth and sixth axis for viewing around. This next part is for VR users. If you are not playing in VR, skip to the next part. Ever since the Red Skies update, VR War Thunder has been much more graphically demanding. I highly recommend not playing on very high settings. The recommended settings that I, that I have set texture quality to high. In fact, first set everything to minimum, low, off, turn everything off, set it to minimum if you can. Then set texture quality to high. Shadow quality should be at least medium. I'll explain why in a moment. Render resolution, max that out. Physics quality, set that to one, which is the, that is, that is one. I don't, there's no number, but just set it there. Terrain deformation, I believe that's as low as it can go. Tire tracks, marks, I recommend putting it on medium, but you don't have to have that. Cockpit mirror reflections quality, I recommend setting it to either one of these. Don't set it too high or else VR is going to, your VR performance is going to drop significantly. Shadows. You want shadows on. Object shadows. Now this one is going to affect your performance a lot, but I will, I'll explain to you why you want it on in a moment. Physics animation for suspension model. I recommend having this on. It makes it harder to track tanks uh, and, and their movement because their suspension doesn't work and they're really stiff, so it's, it's hard to tell when they're bouncing up and down to get an accurate shot. VR mode, obviously War Thunder VR will not work unless you enable this. And VR streamer mode, this is what's going to turn that bug eye view uh, to a 16 by 9 view or 9 by 16 view. So that's what you see in all my videos. I recommend turning this on, but again, it's going to affect your performance quite heavily. So out of all the things that are going to affect your performance that you could turn off, if you're not streaming, leave that one off. Now, this next one, Shadows. Um, War Thunder has this, uh, for whatever reason, uh, Gaijin makes it to where aircraft, when you're in an aircraft, certain things will never render, no matter how high your settings are. These are things like fences, check hedgehogs, um, any like concrete walls, some lamp posts. But these are things that you can still crash into if you're in a helicopter, or land on, or hit your chopper blades on, which it happens to me quite a bit. Now, luckily, there is a way to see them. If you, They all still have their shadows. So if you turn your shadows off, you'll never see them. But you can look for these invisible objects by their shadows, and you can know whether or not there is something that you're going to run into. Um, Obviously, if you're going at high speeds, it's, you're probably not going to see it in time. But if you're just hovering around really slowly, um, you'll see them. So turn your shadows on medium and turn on object shadows. If you don't at least do that, you will not see the shadows of these invisible objects. Render resolution is very important to have on for VR. If you lower that down, it's going to be so blurry. It will make your performance better, but it's going to the picture quality is going to be so bad. You're, it's not going to be worth playing in VR. The fourth thing you want to do is go into the options and go through all of the settings. If you've already done this or you don't want to do this, just skip to the next part. But if you go into options, there's a couple things that you'll definitely want on and or off. For air battle settings, I would turn off show uh, pilot and cockpit and set your bomb fuse to 1.5 seconds at least. I also recommend turning off all autopilots, but you can turn this on if you want. For helicopters, turn off aiming with VR HMD. Now, right now it doesn't work. Previously, I think it was before the Red Skies update, I don't know when, but helicopters, you could control the guns with your, uh, with your head, but it was very wonky and you could only do it when in ATGM view, when it was kind of pointless. So. Until they fix that feature, I would just leave this off. 
Or you can leave it on and whenever they turn it, enable it, maybe it'll work one day. I don't know. But turn off autopilot. For tanks, turn this off. I would turn this off if you want to have a better performance worth under, but if you're an absolute chad, you can turn that on by default. <laughs> um Oh, another thing. I highly recommend for aircraft, set your gun targeting distance to no. This is going to sound weird, but um, it makes it a lot easier to be accurate at longer ranges when you are doing ground pounds. But that's just my personal preference. I, oh, I also recommend, uh, where is it? Measurements. Setting everything to the metric system. Now, some aircraft have their uh, measurements in knots some have them in kilometers per hour um, but I just use the metric system because it's more familiar to me but you don't have to do that if you don't want to whatever you want that's just what I recommend oh one more thing I would recommend turning on fuel and ammo indication on always temperature isn't that big of a deal but um, I would definitely have fuel and ammo on always. That will be it for this video. In the next video, I will be going over controls mode, movement, and mechanization controls. After that video, I will make separate videos on weaponry, radar, camera controls, miscellaneous controls, and trimming. So, stay tuned.